Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or professional level. So won't you stay tuned? Welcome. Our guest today is a woman who did a career change. One day she woke up and realized her life as a ballerina could not continue. And what was she going to do? Well, after some introspective thinking and contemplating and meditating and everything else, she became known as a pastry chef. And I would like to welcome Natasha McAller, and we're going to learn about pastry, cooking, and especially vanilla. Welcome. Thank you so much, Barry. It's so lovely to be here and to talk about vanilla. I'm and to get you, get you so into learning things about vanilla that you've never learned before. Wonderful, because I am looking forward to it, because I go and buy these vanilla um, pods, as you would call yes. them, and it's kind of like, how do I know if I'm getting ripped off, I'm getting the genuine one, or what? So why don't we just start there? Okay. How do you know if you're getting a good vanilla pod? Well, I have a vanilla pod right here. This is, a, this is a top grade A vanilla pod. It's supple, it's shiny, and as a famous uh, British chef, Michelle Rue says, he tells that it's perfect if you can tie it in a knot. But when you go to buy them, they're usually packaged. They're usually packaged. You want to look for the shininess. You want to see shine. When it starts getting dull and it starts getting thin, and, and darker than a, this rich chocolatey brown color, that means it's, it's lost its moisture and its suppleness. If you see it with little bits of white dust on it, you want those. It's got, it's a naturally occurring vanillin on that, so pick those. All right, well, let's just back up. How did you start to become enamored with vanilla? Well, I've always loved vanilla and most people, we have vanilla memories from childhood, and mine was not food related. My mother used to spritz me with vanilla perfume on my way to ballet class, and I loved it. I would rush into the ballet studio and I smelled of vanilla, and I kept a little bottle of vanilla perfume on my, on my dressing room table throughout my career as a ballerina. So That's... it was... <laughs> you it have was fond memories. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. What was life like as a ballerina? Well, I absolutely loved it. I knew from six years old, two weeks into ballet lessons, that's what I wanted to be. And it's hard work. It's, it's definitely a labor of love and a commitment. And, but I absolutely love dancing. And I, I remember with great fondness dancing through a, what, what was a quite a long career. I was very fortunate. Because I know you danced with the Joffrey, which I've seen many times, and I'm just yes. trying to remember if I've seen you dance, and Phantom of the Opera, you yes. were in that too. Yes, I danced, uh, and I also danced in Boston Ballet, and I danced in a company in Europe. I was, uh, I had come to New York as a, as a uh, teenager, wanting to get into American Ballet Theater, ABT, because Misha, I'd seen him perform and I absolutely fell in love with him. I little had a bit of a crush, I must admit. And, and I tried, I was determined. I didn't make it into the company, so I went to Europe and I danced in Belgium. Oh, of that's all places. exciting. Lots of good chocolate there in Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> very true, very true. So when did you finally realize that your days as a ballerina and a dancer was coming to an end? Well, there comes, there comes a time, and I was fortunate enough to not have a career-ending injury, and I, I danced into my 30s uh, doing Phantom of the Opera, and when the show finally closed in the Los Angeles production, it was time, and you always know it. It's the only art form that has a sell-by date, <laughs> and the time had come, and I had to rethink myself and and what I wanted to do what I was passionate about and cooking is what you're passionate about cooking is what I'm passionate about absolutely now you interned or volunteered f with this one woman out in California and or was it Hawaii and 
you got involved in this um, yes. event that's held every year in Hawaii. Yes, yes. It, um, it was called Cuisines of the Sun. And I was brought in as a volunteer to help coordinate the, the star chefs and coordinate their helpers. And I did it for eight years. And by the time we finished, it was the chefs loved to do this event. Uh, and they, we had everybody, everybody helping them. It was just the smoothest, most easy. And not only that, but you'd open the, the door from the kitchen and you see these beautiful beaches and the waves and you could hear the, the palm trees swaying. It was just paradise, so. Well, you know, I was reading about it and I said, this is something I really would like to do. Until the part that said, the volunteers basically paid to be a volunteer. Yes. And I said, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna do this. <laughs> well, how did you become a pastry chef then? Well, I, I took a general, I, I chose to go to culinary school because I wanted to fill in the gaps. Um, as, a, as a ballerina, uh, we would be laid off every summer, like a, like a school teacher, for about three months. And in order to make a little extra money, I loved cooking. And I loved doing dinner parties and baby showers and cakes and scones and whatnot. And so after I had completed my, my culinary course, uh, I just gravitated towards pastry. It's, it's, it's people ask me, how did you go from being a ballerina to a pastry chef? And they're both artistic. They're both low paying jobs that you're passionate about, hours on your feet, uh, not turned out though this time. And, and you're making something creative. It's performance art. All that's left to the audience is the memory. What an interesting concept. I never thought about it that way, but yes. The only, I love to bake. My only problem oh. is, I, somebody says, what do you love that you do all the time? I never make the same thing twice. It's always, because I'm always experimenting. But when it comes to baking, I don't yes. know what you say, the formula or the um, nuances to making sure it's right. But my grandmother always said, experiment, the worst that can happen is you throw it out. That's so. right. <laughs> That's right. You're absolutely right. You have a very wise grandmother. <laughs> now, you, let's go back to vanilla, because okay. I love vanilla. You're saying, okay, you told us how to pick one and in the store how to buy one. All right. Where is it really grown? Vanilla is grown in tropical regions, basically 20 degrees north and south of the equator. And uh, so it has to be tropical. It's, it's actually an orchid. It's a flowering orchid. And it's one of the few, there are, I wanna say tens of thousands of orchid varieties in the world. And it's one of two varieties that bears fruit. And it bears a vanilla pod. It's actually a pod. It looks like a bean when it's, when it's not ripe. And that's why we call it vanilla bean. But they're interchangeable. <laughs> now you wrote a book. That is absolutely fantastic. I drooled. Thank you. Called The Vanilla Table. And what I was amazed about is that you got 33 chefs to contribute their favorite recipe on vanilla. And I was really excited because I knew three of them personally, which uh -huh. is like, wow, I've met <laughs> some really fabulous people in my life. How did you get them to contribute? What was the secret? The secret is... Um, well, it started with Cuisines of the Sun, where I worked with many of these chefs and uh, helped make their, their event and the pressure on them to make the best food and the best impression on the guests possible. And so when I asked, would you please contribute a recipe, they said, of course, what would you like? It was so generous. And people... Um, People often see chefs in cooking shows and throwdowns and chopping boards and whatever. And there's actually quite a camaraderie of, of, of uh, a networking of chefs. We want to help each other and we do help each other. And so a chef that I knew would ask another chef and they'd say, of course, I'll do it because you, you did some great things for me. It's, it's a trade. It's, it's an exchange. It's, it's, um, and so it's very heartwarming, and, and um, I feel very uh, 
thrilled and, and also very humbled by their generosity. In your cookbook, one of the recipes that really blew my mind was you put vanilla with a scotch filet steak. That just blew my mind. And then you had oxtail pot pies for some of your intriguing recipes. Now, do you serve these often or are you going to, now you're opening up a restaurant. Yes. So are these going to be on your menu or what? There will be many dishes that have vanilla influences and it's, it's been such a journey uh, exploring the savory side, what works with vanilla. And not only in my exploration of recipes, but what the chefs contributed, uh, mushrooms with vanilla. Could you imagine? And it's absolutely divine. It's just delicious. And, and tomatoes and, and oxtail. Oxtail with a vanilla Shiraz gravy is just, it's absolutely the, the perfect uh, autumnal winter cold nights dish. And because it's oxtail, it's not as expensive a cut, but it's full of flavor. It's interesting because I think oxtail is more prevalent on the West Coast than on the East Coast. Do you? I have to check that out. I have to go yes. to the grocery store and talk to my butcher. Talk to your this. butcher, yes. In the book, it also talks about 101 tips for buying and storing vanilla. Let's start with, how do you store it? The best way to store vanilla is in a dark, like a, a brown bottle or, or a, a, a light proof bottle or metal tin. And you want to, uh, you want to store it at room temperature in your pantry the only exceptions are vanilla syrup, which you need to store in the refrigerator. Uh, vanilla lasts quite a long time, pure vanilla. Uh, the, the pods can last two to three years, and the extract can last even longer. If it doesn't say organic on the label for vanilla, and it says imitation, would you recommend the imitation or not? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Imitation vanilla, although very inexpensive, is, is created from, it's, it's chemically processed from things that we wouldn't consider to be um, something that one would eat. Uh, they're derived from wood pulp to extract this kind of vanillin flavor, so I do not recommend it. Like a good perfume, or a beautiful organic chicken, I would use pure vanilla. All right, now you've got lots of things here. Yes, I do. All right, so why don't we talk about some of the things that you've got here. Okay. All right, what do you want to start with? Uh, should I do, would you like to try my little science experiment? Sure. Okay, I have a little science experiment for you. All right. What's your first memory of vanilla? When you think of vanilla, what comes to mind? Ice cream. Ice cream, okay. What I would like you to do is smell this. Take a, a pinch. Now you close your eyes and place it on your tongue. And what comes to mind now? Salt. Salt, but Vanilla. Yeah. So Once you get past the salt, there's a lot of vanilla. A lot of vanilla. But vanilla, to our memories, or most of our memories, is supposed to be something that's sweet. Right. That's why I'm surprised. And this is, it just shows you, and it, but it tastes, I mean, it's salt, but it tastes beautiful. It's got such a fragrance. It, it opens up a whole new world. And what I've done with with vanilla table is to show that you can make all sorts of savory things as well as sweet using Fabulous. vanilla. Okay. Well, that is really interesting. Isn't you it? have to try it. Okay. And, and vanilla, in actuality, is not, it's not, if you bit into this, it would be most unpleasant. It's, there's no sweetness to it at all, but when we smell it, we smell sweet, but there's no sweet in it. Isn't well, that interesting? Yeah, but can you eat the pod? Or just the beans inside? Oh, no, you can eat the whole pod. Oh, you can? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. There's, there's, um, there's vanilla, uh, vanilla powder. They dry the whole pod, 
Okay. And then they mill it, finely mill it, and finely mill it until you get this beautiful dust. And that's what the vanilla salt contains, is, van is vanilla powder or dust mm. and flaky sea salt. Whoa. And I've heard, I always ask people, what would you, what would you use vanilla salt with? If you were going to, what would you? The only thing that comes to mind is like a salad. A salad. Okay. But you've got other things here. I've got many other things. So let's talk about the other things that you would pair vanilla salt with. Okay. I have got a mango and hearts of palm salad with a vanilla grat. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> okay, so that's, now you've got the hearts of palm there, and this is something that I've never seen because I always buy it in a jar. Yes. And it, it's really fascinating. I don't know if we can see it, but this is a big vanilla uh, hearts of palm. Wow. This is from Hawaii. It's um, on the, from the big island. It's called a Waialea hearts of palm. Wow. And this is the, obviously the outside casing. And within, you want to crack it, slit it down, like where the smile is, like I've done here. This is the this is the casing, and it just pops right open, and then you can use the heart. The heart is closer to the bottom, like an artichoke, and you can just dice it up like I've done here. Well, let me ask you. You said closer to the bottom. How tall do the hearts of palm grow? Uh, they can they can grow quite tall. Uh, I I believe that this is probably this much higher, but they're they're all standard standard uh, measurement uh, for for packing purposes. But it is okay. it's just it you can use uh, canned hearts of palm. They're they're quite they're absolutely fine. But to have a fresh one it's from awesome. Hawaii, this was just picked a couple of days ago, and uh, oh, it's just such a beautiful a beautiful. Uh, fruit, vegetable, palm. <laughs> Plus the fact when I buy it in the jar, it always comes watered down or oiled down or something like that. And when I was tasting, when we were setting up, it was like a whole nother world. So what are you going to make with this? I am going to make a salad. Okay. I've got some beautiful yeah. microgreens here. I've got the hearts of palm. I've got some mango, some lime juice, ginger, and a little bit of... Um, a prosciutto de parma that I've okay. just put in a pan and um, just heated up the pan, no oil in it, and just let it crisp up. So you've got this lovely crunch at the finish of the salad. Oh, wow. How long does it take for that to just? Probably two to three minutes. Okay. Yes. Does it spl uh, splatter like bacon? No. Okay. Not I'll at make all. It. Not at all. Very safe. No okay. splattering. You won't get your, your new stove. Covered with grease marks. Okay. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Okay. So what I'm going to do is. What do you need to do? What do I need? Do you want to uh, split the vanilla pod? Okay. Do you know how to do that? No. Okay. Just tell me. Quick lesson. What you want to do is, well, why don't we do two? Then we have twice as much vanilla. Okay. So you just take the, take the top of the vanilla. Okay audience is that way. Take the top of the vanilla, you hold it down, and you want to just flatten the, flatten the pod. You want to take your, the sharp end of the knife and press it in and just draw it down the center of the vanilla and cut it open so you have a, a V. Then you're going to take the back of your knife, the dull side of the knife, and you're going to scrape it. And you want to pull like you're doing a salmon, you just want to pull the vanilla, the vanilla outer pod off the um, from the, off the uh, the vanilla, and you have the seeds in here. But it can all be used. So, do you want to do the other side? Sure. Okay. Now, it's oh, I don't have. It, I think I've got just okay. twisted around here. There you go. Okay. Beautiful. And that's what you get. And that's what you get. Let's see, I want to... It's kind of musty. 
Yes, it is. It's it's a bit woody, so when you you taste it, but the aroma then goes up into your nose, and it's it leaves that that lovely memory, that lovely scent. So I'm just going to pop this into this bowl. Okay. And you can take your take your vanilla pot. It works. There's many many uses for this. You can um, dredge this in in sugar, and just let it. You make this beautiful vanilla sugar. You can also put it in vodka and make vanilla extract. You just keep adding vanilla pods and you can make your own vanilla extract. Uh, and you can also make um, vanilla syrup and just put it in a simple syrup. And all the recipes are in my, my vanilla uh, pantry chapter. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do that. Okay. Just gonna... I'm going to make a little bit of vanilla grette. So what That's I have good. here is some uh, oil. Any kind of oil or just? Um, I use grapeseed oil. I like to use grapeseed oil, but any, any, um, not olive oil because it, it tends to overpower this, this, the, the hearts of palm and the very gentle flavors. And in here I have a bit of, of wasabi and some coconut milk or coconut oil you can use. I'm just going to put in a touch of honey. And you can use uh, palm sugar if you'd like, if you want to keep the whole thing very palm. What's palm sugar? Uh, palm sugar is, is, the, is the sap of the palm tree. And, and there's also date palm sugar. Uh, and it's really um, a little pinch of poppy seeds. And I think we'll use a little vanilla salt today. What do you think? We'll just okay. have this be very vanilla. So a little bit of vanilla salt. And a lime. Now, how much did you use? What, a teaspoon, tablespoon? A teaspoon of, of um, uh, two teaspoons of oil. You can have coconut oil, a bit of coconut oil, and a bit of, of uh, grapeseed or or just canola oil, corn oil, okay. and then one lime, uh, a teaspoon of honey, a teaspoon of poppy seeds. So it's it's a teaspoon tablespoon kind of uh, dish. Yeah, and very very simple. Just give this a little bit more of a squeeze here. There we go. And we're just going to whisk it with my very tiny whisk. Got the smallest one I could find. And I'll just mess this up. It's very vanilla-y. Yeah, I was just the vanilla is dissipating, which is what I because it was mm. in chunks. So I was just looking to see. Yes, it's lovely. Okay, and then we're simply going to take. Let's move our little. Palm, hearts of palm casing. Which is, and I'm going to take a few of these beautiful microgreens. You can use we, microgreens, you can the, use um, regular lettuces, but the darker lettuces and the more colorful, the more, the more beautiful and the more inviting, I think, a dish is. So we've got that. Slice now, do you remember the names of some of these? Because these were really interesting. Those are, are okra microgreens. There's hmm. arugula. There's um, um, cilantro. There are all these little baby greens. There's sweet pea in there. All sorts Good. of just uh, delicious. So I'm just going to do a quick chop. You can use papaya or mango or Oops, uh, even pineapple if, if that's your favorite. I happen to love papaya. Oh, and I love mango too. It's just really refreshing, tropical, and so simple to make, so easy. And I've got uh, now, a little bit of hearts of palm. Is it easy to get hearts of palm, fresh, fresh hearts of palm? Uh, you can get you can get the hearts of palm. You have to. They primarily in America. They'll come from Hawaii. Okay. And you can order them. There's there's a website, and they do sell them uh, in New York certainly. And it, it's if you can get them, just enjoy, enjoy. It's absolute bliss to get to get fresh hearts of palm. 
I can vouch for that. It really <laughs> is. And I'm just going to add a little bit of ginger. Buying ginger, what do you look for? Because I use a lot of ginger, and I never know if I'm doing. Oh, it's the it's the best. You want you want the the thinnest skinned ginger. That's that's what you're going to. Uh, uh, get the most juice out of it. As uh, when it gets thicker and it gets a bit drier, you're going to have less less moisture in the ginger. It's also harder to cut when it's when it's drier, Got as it. we know. Okay. Yes, yes. So we'll just do a quick bit. I think that is more than enough. But I love ginger. I would put double the amount in there. I don't think so, people can see. So good for you. Oh, thank you. And another little dice this way. Yes, I have to learn to cut that way. It's a it's a rock. You just rock. You rock just up rock. and down. It's all rocking. <laughs> little rocking, <laughs> chopping dance. So tell us that while you're preparing this, tell us about your new restaurant. My new restaurant is called Sosal, which is short for Sausalito, uh, which means little willow, and this. This is uh, going to open in El Segundo, California, and it is uh, Nuevo Rancho Cuisine. So we're using, we're taking the, um, we're taking what was California when it was owned by Spain, Mexico, and we're, we're using local ingredients and really celebrating what California was when it was, when this area was a rancho, it was a willow, willow ranch. Oh, beautiful. So fresh, simple, gorgeous, just a few minutes from Los Angeles International Airport. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so let's put, put the mango on here. Oh, this is so beautiful. I love it with the little vanilla, little vanilla seeds on there. And so we've wow. got everything in here. Just gonna dress it. Look at that. Doesn't it look gorgeous on the palm and it's on the mango? Fabulous. Isn't that I'm just beautiful? Here. I can't wait to taste this. I'm just going to garnish, of course. I always have to garnish. Fresh herbs are one of the best and least expensive ways to really change a dish, including dishes with vanilla in it. And what you want to, uh, what you want to do is always have, if you can have a, have a bit of uh, a few pots of, of fresh herbs. It's great to just take a pinch of it and add it to your dish. Just I a live little in New York. Chef's you, no balcony. You, you gotta have a you gotta have a windowsill, right? Okay. Okay. And we're just gonna finish it with a little bit of our crispy prosciutto. Oh my goodness, this is fabulous. And there we go. And you're dressed. Yes. I don't know if the audience can see this. It is just simple, fabulous, and I can't wait to taste it. Okay. Since you travel and you commute yes. between California, New Zealand, and other parts of the yes. world, when you travel on long flights, what foods do you take with you? Simple foods. Simple foods that digest easily. I tend to go for... Um, uh, biscuits or crackers, and um, uh, protein, you know, a bit of nuts. I really like nuts and, and fruit. I like to have fruit as well, but I always make sure that I eat it before I get off the plane. I had a very unfortunate, uh, I was called out in Hawaii of all places, <laughs> and they told me, no, no, you have something in your bag. <laughs> the dog is telling you you have something in your bag. <laughs> So I always make sure I eat the fruit. <laughs> Good thing it wasn't something else. Yes. <laughs> In the closing moments of the show, what would you like to leave the audience with? I want to leave the audience this. absolutely. Um, gonna... I have. Okay. I have that. I'm afraid. Not a problem. Um, I want to leave the audience with vanilla. Is you start mm. with a memory from childhood of vanilla, and I want you to through looking through this book and thinking of ideas to create your own vanilla memories. And may they include savory as well as sweet. Is it good? 
It's very good. I didn't want to crunch while you were talking. <laughs> mm. Are you getting the vanilla? I'm getting everything. Mm. It's fabulous. It's, it's like it's like kettle corn is is sweet and salty. We actually have a recipe for kettle corn, vanilla kettle corn, in the book. Oh, fabulous! And it's it's you want that. It it just makes it makes the food more more fulfilling and satisfying if you have all of those flavors and textures. And one of the things I found out about about vanilla was that it pairs beautifully with umami. Umami is that fifth sense of taste. I'm that not meaty, with that. it's U M U U U M A M I, wrong language, and uh, so it pairs with caramelization. I have a uh, one of my, I, not a mother sauce, but my my mother um, pantry dish is vanilla caramelized onions. Oh, you take onions, you chop them up, you just add them to a pot with a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter, and you split a vanilla pot and you put it in there. And I have people come to the house and they say, I smell vanilla, but I smell onions, but vanilla, and it was just, it was very, very pleasant, very great experience, and they just, uh, they just loved it, wanted more. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. It's been wonderful, and I love learning and tasting all about vanilla. Oh, thank you so much. You're quite welcome, Tess. Thank you for joining us. Lots of fun things to do with vanilla. Love to hear what you've done with it. Please write us here at The Woman's Connection. Look forward to hearing from you. Bye now.